Good morning, my beautiful diamonds and my um, TikTokers this morning, this fine Monday morning. Yeah, that's right. It's Monday again. You know, these weekends, they go by so fast. It's almost like just taking a lunch break and you have to come back after an hour from lunch. It's Monday and I'm just so grateful that I have an amazing job to go to because I have a great team of people that I work with. Everyone is just so positive and so, I don't know, they seem to be so loving and so warm, you know, the people that I work with. So I'm blessed because I know a lot of people that they dread, <laughs> they literally dread going to work each morning, whereas I look forward to it because of the wonderful people that I am privileged to work with. Now, today we're going to be talking about a perfect plan, and it's coming from Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. You know, I woke up this morning, and as I'm sitting here before I start my ministry, I was just crying in prayer to my Heavenly Father because I was just thinking about how we're living in the last days, and I know how Jehovah God and Jesus Christ they love us so much and they don't want to have to destroy us. And I was, um, <laughs> I was telling my Heavenly Father, you know, a lot of people, they want to do things your way, but there's so many false religions out here and so many false teachings and people are confused. So please, Father, <laughs> because I know you love us so much. Just show us the right way and what's right. I know a lot of these religions, forget about that because I'm not a religious person and I don't do religions. I like if I go for a church, it's usually a fellowship church or a community church. And that's basically for the fellowship so I can build other people up and they can build me up and we can pour into each other. And you can't get that fellowship if you're just sitting at home. And I, I always like to find a church where they have like a good sermon, like someone getting up there preaching like a Joyce Myers or a Joel Osteen or a Charles Stanley. And they give like a good 30 to 45 minute sermon. And then we have a Bible study for an hour, just studying one chapter out of the Bible. And then we have song and prayer, you know, because you have to give God praise. And if you can find yourself a nice community church or a fellowship church, then you are truly blessed. I live across the street from a big Catholic church, but they don't give much spiritual food. And it's it's just not a good church. And they don't have any, like, games, like movie night. You know, things to, like for the community. And that's what most a lot of these churches need to start doing so that people are not so bored. You know, a lot of people, they confuse boredom with loneliness. Most times they're not really lonely. They're just bored. And you want to hang out with people who are like-minded and who are on Jesus Christ's team because you want to hang out with people who are quality. And of course, you're going to try to help those who are still seeking and need help. But like I said this morning, I was just so emotional because I love you guys very much. And I know Jehovah loves you and Jesus loves you even more. <laughs> and I know that is so hard for people sometimes to know what to believe because it's just rough. So I say stick close to the Bible and listen and follow Jesus Christ's teachings and know that Jehovah, Jesus loves Jehovah more than anything. That's his heavenly father. And we'll follow his example. You know, what else can we do? That's the best that we can do and help people who look like they need help, you know, but anyway, today we're going to be focusing on Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. And it says, I am sure that the good work God began in you will continue until he completes it on the day when Jesus Christ comes again. Now, I wonder how many times we've heard preachers say, God has a plan for your life. We nod, perhaps we'll smile, and then go on our way. I'm not sure most of us truly believe that. At least our lives don't reflect that we believe it. What does it mean to think 
that God has a perfect plan for us. Perhaps it's the word perfect that troubles us. We're fallible and we're imperfect and we make so many mistakes. How could anything be perfect in our lives? We know ourselves too well. Immediately, we think of our shortcomings and shake our heads. That's a trick of Satan, so please don't be fooled. The plan isn't perfect because we're not perfect. And the plan is not perfect that God has for us because we're perfect people. That's not it. But the plan is perfect because God is perfect. For now, let's say it this way. God has a special plan for each of our lives. As we think about God at work in us, we remind ourselves that imperfect as we are, God is perfection. Nothing we can ever do would be good enough to satisfy God's perfection. Only Jesus, the perfect one, is good enough. Nothing but our faith in him makes us acceptable to God. The apostle went on to say that we are saved through Jesus Christ so that we can do good works. God has prepared us for the kind of life he wants us to live. His word makes it very clear how that life works. It's not that we're perfect or ever will be perfect while we're here on this earth. The point is that God is perfect and he has a plan for us that is a perfect plan. The plan for our lives is perfect because it comes from the perfect planner. God's plan for us includes obedience and service to him from a sincere heart. God holds out directions for a full satisfying life. Our role is to align ourselves with that plan. We are to keep our eyes on Jesus and his abilities, not on ourselves and our disabilities. As soon as we say, but wait, I'm not perfect. I fail all the time. We have taken our attention off of God and allowed Satan to distract us with wrong thinking. Our loving Lord pleads with us to turn our minds and our hearts fully over to him. The more fully we do that, the more completely we live by his good and perfect plan. We are to be like Joshua when he said at Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, Always remember what is written in the book of law. Speak about that book and study it day and night then you can be sure to obey what is written in it. If you do this, check this out, you will be wise and successful in everything that you do. So that's a beautiful thing, my darlings, which like I said, I don't understand how people say that they don't believe that the Bible is the word of God because it's written by humans or written by men. Like, you know, people can transfer messages from the moon to the earth, but God is supposed to be so limited and so inequipped uh, that he can't make sure that his children have a letter to show us the best way to live our lives so that we can be successful. Of course he has that capability. In fact, they said through COVID, the Bible was the most seeked out book that was requested. And they noticed that more and more people were buying Bibles. That is the number one best-selling book anyway. And we know that with the Spanish Inquisition and uh, uh, back in history, how they kept trying to get rid of this Bible, kept trying to destroy it, burn it. They went into people's homes and they caught a Bible in there. You're not allowed, but you see how our great creator, our father, he did not permit that to happen. Oh no. So regardless of what translation you choose to read it from, the principles are all the same. And please know the difference between what was a cultural law, especially when it came to women, and what was a universal law. And also understand that words mean different things when it's translated from Greek and Hebrew. So that's why it's so important for you to do your own research. Don't listen to other people's interpretations about things. Allow the Holy Spirit to interpret it for you. And all you have to do to get the Holy Spirit 
The Bible says all you have to do is just ask. You see how simple and how easy these things are? And because things are so easy, like we can depend on Jesus, we know that Jesus will save us from some real bad situations. And the reason why it's so hard to trust that is because it's so easy. And we're not used to easy. I know I, I wasn't used to easy. I'm used to struggling and fighting and, and working hard for everything. And when I grew to realize that it's really this easy, what? Oh my goodness, it, it's just too much. Let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Jehovah, our perfect God, help us in this battle for the mind because we know Satan is trying to take over our minds. That's why he's everything is being legalized when it comes to all his drugs and so many people are getting caught out there on it because we know that Satan, the devil, is definitely trying to attack our mind because if he can't control our mind, he can control our lives. Satan constantly, he reminds us us of our imperfections and our weaknesses but heavenly father we ask you to remind us of your perfection and of your love and your closeness so that we can always walk in victory and we ask all these things heavenly father Yahweh through your son Yeshua Jesus Christ amen so now we're going to move on my beautiful diamonds to your power thought for today here we are, my darlings. Cooperating with God. We need to start cooperating with God. When I get up in the morning and I know I got to go exercise again, I mean, I heard my flesh say a couple of weeks ago in the gym, you know, your flesh will talk to you. I was, I was down in the gym and I'd just gotten off the treadmill and I was starting to work out with my trainer and I heard my flesh say, am I going to have to do this the rest of my life? So I answered it back. Yes, you are. <laughs> See, you don't have to let your flesh push you around. You can talk back to it because the enemy works through our flesh. That's right, honey. Sometimes you definitely have to talk back to the foolish thoughts that Satan the devil puts into your mind. Let me share another power thought with you this morning. Um, and it's going to uh, uh, come from Psalms chapter 40, verse 1 and 2. Let me share this with you. Hey, you Virgin fam. I'm Dorian. And I'm Morgan. And we run a ministry called The Rooted Life, where we help women grow and glow in life and relationships. We do that through our podcast, through our online community, and through helpful devotionals right here on the YouVersion Bible app. And today's verse of the day comes from Psalm 40, 1 through 2. It reads, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. So what do you do when you're doing everything you know to do and your prayers are still going unanswered? What I love about this scripture is we really see the heart of our Father. We see that waiting is not punishment. In fact, it's purposeful. We see God moving and working in the waiting, and we see him do two things. The first thing we see him do in the waiting is we see him mold us. It is during this time that he's healing and revealing and maturing us so we can actually steward what he has for us. The second thing we see God do in the waiting is we see him draw us to him. Often God uses waiting as a tool to bring us closer to him. It's just something about waiting that cultivates this deep sense of desperation and hunger and yeah. thirst for his presence. And the longer the wait, the more time we have to mature and grow deeper in our faith and in our trust. So be encouraged today, you version family. Even in the waiting, God is still working. Know that in your wait, even in this moment, God is strengthening your faith and he is giving you a firm place to stand. We love That was very, very good. And I appreciate our fellow Christian sisters, our sisters in Christ. You know, as Christians, we know that we should turn to God and we're supposed to trust him. But sometimes we do forget to do so. However, if we examine this a little deeper, we'll recognize that forgetfulness isn't our issue. The issue is pride. So looking back, we realize that God had been knocking on the door of our hearts for a long, long time, waiting to be invited in to heal what only he can heal. And once we turn to him, he took the broken pieces of our friendship and our, 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 and, 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 and our hearts and he made it so much better. This is what happens when we believe in him. So which doors of your heart 
have you kept closed off to God? What's one action you can take today to turn to him and invite him in to cure you and to help you to become a success? These are some questions that you should reflect on for today. And now we're going to go to how well do you really know your Bible, my beautiful diamonds? Let's see now. Where are we? Are we still talking about Noah for last week? Let me see. Let me see. Today's date is the 15th. Okay, so here we are. Who was the mother of Isaac? Was it Elizabeth, Sarah, Gomer, or Mary? Genesis chapter 21, verse 3. Next, who was the mother of Jacob and Esau? Was it A, Rebecca, B, Rachel, C, Sarah, or D, Hannah? Genesis chapter 25, verse 21 through 26. Your last question for today. Who was the mother of Joseph and Benjamin? Was it A, Anna, B, Lydia, C, Kethra, or D, Rachel? Genesis chapter 46, verse 19. And there you'll get your answer. So don't forget to do your own research. If you didn't know any of the answers to these questions, next time you could be great at Bible trivia when we play the Bible trivia games. And you are going to be so prepared. And you're going to come out a champion because if you do your research and the next time we go over these questions, you're going to be knocking them out like nothing. Bah, 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 bah. So there you have it, my darlings. Keep in mind. It's Monday morning. It's a new day. I mean, a new fresh start. And don't forget to depend and trust in Jesus Christ because when you trust in God and Jesus to do the best for you, you don't have to worry and you don't have to suffer from anxiety. Sheila loves you, but more importantly, Jehovah and Jesus Christ loves you so much. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle.